Mm. So ISO 27001 is an information security management system uh, updated in 2022. The 27001 update was very, very minimal. So in terms of the management system itself, very little, if anything, actually changed. When okay. they went through the update to the uh, standard, they changed some wording uh, within the standard. So it references itself as a document now rather than a standard. It removed a couple of ands and spaces and things like that. So it was a clarification piece for the management system itself. What they did do is they introduced a new uh, clause uh, which was around planning for the information security management system. For anybody that's been doing this for any length of time, that wasn't anything new. Basically, what it said is when things change in your management system, plan it and manage it effectively. So if you followed my toolkit, you followed my approach, and most people that implement it have always had a forward schedule of things they're going to do. When mm. am I going to update my policies? When am I going to review my policies? When am I going to yep. do my internal audits? Uh, when am I going to do my external audit? When am I going to make those fundamental changes? So okay. planning planning for the information security management system was a change, um, but we have always done it. And you could factor into that the move from the 2013 version to the 2022 version. In addition to that, it added in some clarifications around uh, management review and internal audit. So what it talks about now is things like input and output. So it, it didn't alter it. It clarified it. And again, anybody who's been doing it for a long time always had the inputs to the management review. They always mm. had the structured agenda. They always created a documented uh, minutes of the meeting uh, and the associated documentation that went with that. So no fundamental change. If you're using my approach, you're using a standard approach, you're not going to have any problems. Internal audit did the same. What are the things that go into the internal audit? How you do it in the output? Um, so nothing at all in the 2022 version of the ISMS should worry you or concern you. And it's very, very easy to transition. Um, as with everything, we document everything. We have process maturity and everything is fine. At the same time, well, around about the same time, actually, there was a delay in them. Um, they did an update to the 27002, which is the guidance. So within 27001, we have Annex A. Annex A is a list of information security controls that are known to mitigate risks. And we use yep. that as part of risk management to consider what controls would mitigate risks that we've, that we've got. What they did with the 2022 update is they took it from 114 controls and consolidated some, got rid of some, uh, messed some around, and they introduced 93 controls. They structured them into these uh, simpler domains. And they said, right, these are the new controls that we want you to consider. There are, I think, 11 new controls. Um, and in the blog, uh, which I'll link and I'll send to you, I set out what they are. And again, there's nothing fundamentally scary in there. There's some clarification, again, around process maturity. And some of it I call out for, for BS, right? I mean, one of the ones they introduced was uh, cloud services control. So they said, right, cloud security. Uh, security and cloud uh, services. Here is a new control. Uh, it goes into quite a lot of depth around guidance, around what they want you to do, about having an account manager with the cloud provider, doing audits of the cloud provider. And at the end of that uh, particular guidance, they acknowledge the fact that Microsoft and Amazon ain't going to do it. And that is absolutely fine. So what we do with that is, you know, we can accept the risk of not following the guidance. The reason that it's BS is actually it's third party supplier management. And again, when, when I do my overview of that particular control, I say that if you're managing the cloud provider as you would any other supplier, they are no different. You know, you need a contract, a, a contract with them, terms and conditions within there, what they're doing for you. And you need some kind of assurance that they're doing the right thing. Well, we're already doing that in third party supplier management. Cloud security is no different to that. Uh, it introduced some things around um, documentation and labeling. So, again, it starts to look at things like uh, the introduction of metadata, but because it's not a checklist, what it's saying is, you know, it overreaches a little bit and talks about implementation uh, and the use of metadata. And for again, I've got videos and guides on that for 99 percent of my clients and people that I advise. The cost of implementing a metadata solution into your environment outweighs the risk exposure that you've got and therefore you wouldn't do it. So, you know, there are some crazy things in there. Additional things that it did is it land grabs within the 93 controls. 
So there are things that are already covered. So let me give you an example, uh, data protection uh, globally, GDPR specifically in Europe, but uh, worldwide there are data protection rules and regulations that talk about things like do uh, data masking, data anonymization, uh, things like that. So it land grabbed that, it said, oh, I quite like some of the GDPR data protection stuff, I'm gonna include that now. It didn't need to do it, we're already covering it, that's fine. Uh, it land grabbed business continuity. So it went out to 22301 and it said, oh, 22301 already covers business continuity, right? But it said, ah, now what we want to do is we want to include a business impact assessment and we want to do some business continuity, things that it didn't really need to do because it's covered elsewhere and it brings that in. So using my toolkit and using my templates, I've already I've always incorporated the 2020 uh, 22301 business continuity. So you're golden, right? If you followed my approach, you're going to be golden. Um, yeah. But yeah, it just it just did some of this like land, land grabbing stuff that it didn't it didn't need to do. What I say to people is when we do a transition, look at the the, the standard, the, the update to the management system. If you're not using my process and you're not using my templates and just make sure that where the clarifications are in that you've got them. When it comes to the new controls, treat them as you would any control. Right. Have I got a risk? Yes. Does the cloud supplier security control mitigate a risk I've got? Yes or no. If it does, then include it look at the guidance and implement the guidance proportionate to your risk, your budget and your business need, right? I mean, there's nothing, there, there is nothing scary in there.